Cannot see that far. If you hear ringing in the background, it's them pounding giant posts into the ground for everyone's energy needs. Um, but I'm not going to get into that. I've got lots of stuff to do today. I need to finish um, planting. We had to run errands in town yesterday for that took up most of the day. So I didn't get a chance to plant these, but these are going in the ground today. And I know that I told you, you should wait until an overcast day to plant. But I'm going to do it anyway, because it is nice and cool. It's not nice and cool. It's unfortunately cool <laughs> for me, but for the plants um, that enjoy cool weather, they will appreciate it. I'm getting to the point in the year where I'm starting to um, question all my life choices. Like when did I, or why did I decide to be a dairy farm, a chicken farm, a flower farm, a veggie farm, and produce content <laughs> on the internet for the select few love you guys thank you for watching that watch me um i just have this hope that one day it'll be easier hopefully one day it'll be easier it's just not right now so um if my videos are kind of flustered or all over the place that's just a little glimpse into my brain lately <laughs> i've only got a few hundred things to do in a day every day but it's fine right it's fine One of the earliest lettuces that I'm growing is romaine because romaine likes cooler temperatures. My summer lettuces are all gonna be Salanova lettuces from Johnny's and as well as Muir lettuce because I've heard good things about that being super heat tolerant. Um, but for my spring lettuce, I've got this beautiful, is this not beautiful? It's so pretty. It's an heirloom lettuce that I originally got from Bra Baker Creek. It's called Paris Island. I got it last year as a free seed and actually really liked it. And so then I went out and I bought it <laughs> from them to have for my spring lettuce because I like a crisp, crunchy lettuce. And this um, is definitely fits the bill for that. Even in the baby green size, it's still a little bit crunchy. Because a lot of times when you're growing lettuce or like <laughs> greens for baby greens, they're really soft and buttery, which some people really enjoy, but I like crunchy. I like a crunch. I like to be able to stab it with my fork. I don't want to scoop it. Um, so I really like this for that. And then as well as a couple trays of lettuce that I'm seeding today or planting today, I am planting cabbages. So this is a big old uh, tray of red cabbage or mammoth red rock. It's mammoth red rock. Um, I grew that in the fall and I really liked it. Just the purple cabbages, there's not really a taste difference. It's not as sweet as a green cabbage. But your springtime cabbages aren't going to be as sweet as your fall cabbages anyway because by the time they mature it's warming up which makes brassicas taste more brassicky and not sweet um, like in the fall. But it will still be good. It will be awesome in coleslaw and things like that. I've got a tray of that and then I've got another tray of cabbages and that is one of my favorite green cabbages called Cor de Bue. Um, it's a really sweet, soft cabbage. It's not a good storage cabbage. It's a good fresh cabbage. So um, my my preferences on cabbages will change as the year progresses, but I like this for spring. I just wanted to tell you before I started that I plant my cabbages the same spacing as my cauliflower. So I'm gonna do two rows per 30 inch bed that are 18 inches apart in the row. I 
I've gotten all of the cabbage starts in the ground. Now I'm just down to lettuce. And how I'm gonna space that is three rows on a 30 inch bed. So your rows are gonna be 10 inches apart. And then um, about seven and a half inches apart in the row. Especially for these romaine types that just get tall, they don't stretch out a whole lot. Um, you can really pack them in there tighter. And I'm out of breath. <laughs> Is this not beautiful? I think it is. Now, while this isn't my ideal irrigation, nor my permanent irrigation, it will work because it beats the heck out of standing out here and hand watering all this. I will just leave it run. I'll come back in an hour and I'll move it and I'll come back in an hour and I'll move it. I'm just gonna set an alarm on my phone or else I'll forget. Set a timer for one hour. So this morning, I was trying to prep for dinner because I knew well, really every day is a busy day now, and we've just been eating, I've been cooking, standing here cooking until like 8 o'clock at night every night, and I didn't want to do that today. But, um, who would I be if I didn't forget something? It's 5 o'clock, so I'm going to be cooking for a while. But, anyway, I threw together a pot of chili this morning because that's easy. It might be the last chili of the year because if you're like me, you can't eat chili when it's warm outside. So hopefully it's going to get warm. But you can't eat chili without a peanut butter sandwich. And I meant to start bread earlier in the day, but I just got too busy and I forgot. So what I'm going to do instead is make a hamburger bun recipe and I will just use that for sandwiches. The kids like the rolls anyway um, to make any kind of sandwich, an egg sandwich, a grilled cheese, peanut butter and jelly, whatever your heart desires. Um, I found this recipe on Pinterest uh, a while ago. This has been a staple in our household because it's easy because I do like making bread and I make bread pretty frequently but when the busy season comes I just don't have time a lot of times in the day to start bread because it's like a three hour process. Um, but with this quick hamburger bun recipe, I there's no like double rise time. No, you don't even have to let it rise. You let it rest like 10 minutes and that's it. So this is what I do when I need bread quickly. If I remember, I will try to link the original recipe in the description because I'm not gonna type it all out. My camera would die when I'm in the middle of saying something. In every recipe that calls for oil when I'm baking, I never use oil. I either use melted butter or lard. In this case, this recipe calls for a third a cup of oil, which I'm doubling this recipe so it'd be two thirds cup. But I'm just gonna use two thirds cup of lard instead. And honestly, I think that's the reason why these rolls turn out so soft. Like they're so good um, and so easy. So I'm gonna use lard instead of oil. I've also successfully substituted, maybe not in a bread recipe, like a quick bread, like a sweet bread, or cupcakes I've done it, or muffins. Instead of the oil, I always use applesauce because I can a lot of applesauce every year. So um, that's another way that I use what I have on hand instead of processed crap processed vegetable oils. <laughs> I took video of getting these chicks. I'll put it here. 
We got it from the post office. Yeah, we have to go get to the post office? Yeah. And you drove past it. <laughs> I did. I missed the post office. <laughs> Alright, let's see them things. I haven't made any kind of follow-up documentation of this, but we got we got a hundred um, Cornish Cross chickens in the hopes that we will be able to share these with our community. I kind of thought about doing a workshop for this so that um, new homesteaders can come over, spend a day helping butcher chickens, really learn the ins and outs and how to do it so that they won't feel so nervous themselves when they go to butcher chickens. And then I can send them home with a couple farm-raised chickens of their own because they're just, it's nothing like homegrown. Whether it's meat or veggies or whatever, homegrown is the best. But I'm in here, um, that just pooped on me. But I'm in here because Cornish Crosses, they grow super fast, so they eat a lot, which means they poop a lot. So you have to change their bedding more often than you would uh, just a regular layer chicken. Whoa, they're wild today. They have wings? Yeah. They're getting their feathers, aren't they? Yeah, we're gonna have, when they get big, we're gonna have to cut them. Yeah. Oh my gosh, how do I? I need to move the cows. Look, they're watching me. I need to move them over to this paddock. So let's see if they're more used to moving now and if this will be easy or not. Hey, that went really well, better than expected. Everybody's in. I thought I was done for the day, but turns out I remembered that I forgot to cover this new bed of lettuce that I planted today. So. I'm going to do that now. But I've got nine 50 foot rows planted so far. Really, I've got 21 50 foot rows if you count the potatoes I planted. <laughs> and I've only got, you know, a bajillion more things to plant. So. At the end of a long day, do you ever just wanna? Cause I do. Welp, this is all I got for today. Until next time. <laughs>